Okay, so we'll do our meditation and uh, it will be a reflection tonight. And so there'll be some words on the screen. You don't have to read them or look at them. They're just there in case you get lost. So um, as always, we'll start with just settling into the posture. So take a minute and just let go of any physical tension you might be carrying and become a witness to your own physical experience. present with your own body, letting it settle and align. And take a moment and revive your motivation, touching in with love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. Letting your mind touch those four one by one, reawakening them in your mind to motivate the practice. and shift your focus to the breath. Just the breath, let surface distractions settle.
And while you're watching your breath, the different thoughts and ideas from the day are drifting and swirling around. And you can come back to them and look at them later. But for now, you just decide to stay very present with the breath, letting that breath anchor you to the present. letting it build your concentration. And also giving your mind back some peace. and shift to analysis. Thinking of compassion, wanting to free sentient beings from suffering. We first think about the way in which sentient beings are powerless in many ways. When their suffering arises, when our suffering arises, it is painful and distracting. And then our habitual negative responses to suffering follow. Which is not inevitable, which isn't always, but so often, because of the distracting quality of suffering, we make bad choices and compound the suffering. And when negative responses to suffering arise, it creates the cause for future suffering. So just let the truth of that touch you. This is what happens to us.
And we think changing habits requires huge effort and huge energy. So it's no wonder that so many of us haven't addressed this cycle of pain leading to bad choices, leading to more pain. So remembering these and other reasons can open our heart. And so this way of thinking helps us generate compassion sometimes, but sometimes we need other methods. So thinking of compassion observing phenomena where the focus shifts to seeing impermanence. Think of how sentient beings are changing, but cling to stability. The wisdom that understands impermanence views that aspect in sentient beings, the impermanence of sentient beings, both coarse and subtle. Sentient beings are impermanent, forget their coarse impermanence, and have never realized subtle impermanence is a factor in their suffering. The changes are constant. Their status changes from respected to disrespected, to financially secure, to financially insecure. They are considered too young to know some things too old to know other things can be seen as immature, if we're young, out of touch, if we're old. Or the opposite could be true. Our very youngness could be seen as energetic and vital. Or if we're old, it can be seen as wise, experienced. So there is no stability for sentient beings. So difficult to position themselves. As if there is no feet, no ground. Nothing to rely on. The good news is that suffering changes, but the bad news is so does the happiness. And so focusing specifically on the permanent, or excuse me, on the impermanent aspect of sentient beings. See if you can use that knowledge to fuel your compassion.
And then we shift to compassion, observing the unapprehendable, which is seeing that sentient beings lack inherent existence. They are empty of inherent existence. So this is in general very good news because it means that the difficulties and the suffering and the bad habits are not intrinsic to our nature. However, sentient beings don't understand their empty nature. They grasp at inherent existence, even though it is unapprehendable. It doesn't exist at all. Despite that fact, our ignorance still holds to it. All day, every day, sentient beings are projecting and decorating reality with qualities that aren't there. Sometimes the struggle is trying to find themselves as in adolescence when in fact we build ourselves or collect experiences. Nothing to actually find except perhaps the nature of the mind. Poor sentient beings. The fact that sentient beings are empty of inherent existence and have never realized that reality is a huge factor in their suffering. But also, when we try to help them, we forget this as well. And so it fuels our panic about their suffering when we forget this. Even though this type of compassion only technically arises once we've realized emptiness, even a basic understanding, an intellectual understanding is enough to want everyone to have this information, to be able to break the spell, to pierce through the cloud or the fog 
of ignorance. And so think how wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were free from suffering and its causes. Thinking like this from our heart, not just from the mouth, opens us to imagine all beings, friends, enemies, and strangers as free from the three types of dukkha or suffering. Dukkha of pain, Dukkha of change, and the pervasive Dukkha of conditioning. So spend some time imagining all beings as free from all fear, pain, and anxiety. Think that they abide with satisfaction, fulfillment, peace, and prosperity. Just imagine the best future. And by doing so, we bring it closer to reality. The three types of compassion address the three types of suffering. The three types of suffering, which are really the essence of the first of the noble truths, have a cause. So in wishing them freedom from suffering, we wish them freedom from the second noble truth the origin of suffering. The suffering itself, the karma and disturbing emotions, the root of that self-grasping. May sentient beings be free of all of it. Imagine how they would be if they were free May they be free from dukkha, from suffering, and its causes. With this thought, our compassion increases in intensity. We're not simply thinking it would be wonderful 
if sentient beings were free of dukkha and its causes. Now we are wishing and aspiring that this will come about. Nevertheless, in terms of our engagement, we are still on the sidelines. Although mentally we want sentient beings to be free of dukkha and its causes, we're not yet actively participating in bringing that about. And so now think, I shall cause them to be free from dukkha and its causes. I shall cause them. With this thought, our compassion becomes fearless and unmarred by self-preoccupation. We are determined to be involved. And now our actions will correspond to our aspirations. May we understand and integrate all three types of compassion and in this way be of greatest benefit to all sentient beings. And dedicating. Janchu semchorim poshe ma ke panam ke gyochi ke panyam pa me pa hi gon he gon du Tony Dawa Rinpoche, Ma Ke Panam Ke Gyuchi, Ke Pan Yampa Me Pai, Gone Gondu Pelma Show. Connecting with that. Okay. Thanks, everyone. My little 